we've been working in fear, you know, and they a lot of people work in fear. And I'm not just talking about naturopathy, osteopath. I mean, osteopaths are in the same league as I am, you know. They practice with fear. So we need to uh, double check who comes in. Is it a referral? You know, it's not the way to work. I, I, I don't want to work in fear anymore. Um, yes, it, it's on my shoulder somehow. Um, but I don't, you know, I do it for myself. I do it for my client for free of choice. Alexa Lavoie for Ribbon News, and today I bring you a report on the reality and challenges faced by naturopath in Quebec. I went to the Vita Crew clinic to meet the owner and naturopath Annie Juno, along with her husband, Stéphane Lafrenet. Madame Juno, in addition to being a naturopath by profession, produces a line of natural products authorized by Health Canada. Recently, the College of Physicians sent a fake client to her clinic. This individual recorded the entire naturopathy session with the hidden cameras. Subsequently, Hani received a letter informing her that she had committed several offenses, including giving the impression that she is authorized to practice medicine, prescribing medication or other substances, diagnosing diseases, and proposing medical treatment. Madame Junot was surprised by these allegations. She argued in front of the Court of Quebec and the Superior Court, where she unfortunately lost. Nevertheless, she persisted. And today, she will be able to present her case in front of a judge in the Court of Appeal regarding the judgment of the Superior Court. She will debate Article 31, or Paragraph 1 and 2. Today, we delve deeper into this matter with Madame Junot and Mr. Lafrenet. And I've been a naturopath for over 20 years. And what a naturopath usually do is teach a person how to take care of herself. So we give tools, we give natural product, protocols, uh, juicing, we change the diet. That's what we do. We're teachers of the well-being. And um, so over 20 years, I've had no uh, presidents, I've had no uh, planes, complaints about my teachings or anything ever happened. And suddenly I have a false client that comes into my office, which of course I don't know. And she comes with a symptom of uh, bloating, you know, uh, digestive problems, simple bloating. And so what I do is I propose to change the diet. I give her enzymes. I give her, uh, because we're also producers of uh, natural health products. So I give, which is fibers, chlorophyll, aloe vera juice. And uh, so she leaves. And a couple of months later, I receive a beautiful letter from College of Physician Infraction and with a fine of over 100000 you freak out, and then you sit down and you start analyzing what the hell is going on. This is all the start of the beginning of my story. What is the main infraction that they reproach to you? It's always the same infraction about uh, diagnosis of a disease, prescribing uh, medication or other substances, or uh, it will be um, uh, uh, pr proposing medical treatments. You know, these are the main infractions that I always, always, always use. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was looking at the law, now I want to understand how did I diagnose a disease? I never diagnosed anything. She came into my office with her own diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't understand in my mind what kind of infraction I did. So I started to study the, you know, the law, my husband helped with me, you know, which is the, um, the Article 31 of the medical law. And when I was reading the Article uh, 31, there's like two distinctions of diagnosis deficiency and diagnosis disease. So the first paragraph to explain how it works, it's the first paragraph is not 
only dedicated to doctors. It's dedicated to a pharmacist or anybody that but stays into the field of deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Now, in the article, it says now the second paragraph is dedicated only to doctors, to physicians, which is diagnose of disease, prescribe a medication, da da da. So then again, I never prescribe medication. It's another substance, but it's a natural health product, which Health Canada gave me the permit to, I think, sell my own product. Now I'm not allowed to do that. This is very um, disturbing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we hired a lawyer. We, we tried to go to court with that to try to defend what we're interpreting. interpreting the interpreting of the law is actually the right, what is the right interpretation. Mm -hmm. Now you need to understand for the last 20 years, the law changed in 2002. Before 2002, and this is why, the Article 31, the first paragraph and the second paragraph was combined together. So, yes, before 2002, naturopaths were pretty much illegal. But since the legislator changed the law in 2002, there's two different paragraphs, two dis there's a distinction of deficiencies and disease. But it has never been defended since 20 years. So the lawyers of the Collège des Médecins are, have been using the past law that deficiencies and disease are the same thing, which they're not. Um, and that's why we, we are going to court because in fact, we can't work. We're not, we don't have the right mm -hmm. according to their interpretation of the law. So what I understand is you don't have any or professional order and you're not submit under the control of the College of Physicians. So my question is, why do they try to trap naturopath? I love your question, and it's a question to ask them. Why do they persecute naturopath when we don't harm anyone? Actually, we do the opposite. Uh, right now, there's a problem in hospitals. They're overloaded. And we help people to don't go to hospitals because they feel better. They, you know, they treat differently. And they come with their own will. We don't force people to, to come and visit us so we can teach them how to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So they don't have a good reason to do what they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. I know there is some differences between provinces in, in Canada. We know that um, New Brunswick, um, Prince Edward Island, and you, you mentioned Nunavut, I think, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and Quebec are different. Can you explain the differences? Actually, the other province, most province in Canada, have naturopaths have the right to uh, work uh, uh, legally. Uh, uh, these provinces that you mentioned unfortunately for us, uh, are left behind, meaning that uh, they are all by themselves, uh, meaning that any time uh, anyone can come and uh, puts us in a situation where we didn't want to be at the first place. Uh, so that's why we are asking the appeal court of judge uh, to once and for all clearly mention or differentiate uh, the uh, uh, first paragraph from the second paragraph. Uh, and once this is done, then finally we'll know if we can continue to have an uh, uh, alternative medicine in Quebec or not. In Quebec, there's three grades of law. There's the first court, Court of Quebec, Superior Court, and then the Appeal Court of Quebec. Uh, we've been through the first two, and the way it works, it's all about past judgments. Because of the past judgments work against us, we lose. But it's the first time in history, and that's why I really want to mention this, that uh, the Appeal Court of Quebec has accepted and gave us the permission to appeal the judgment of the superior court because it has never been distinct, of, distinct from the, the article law 31 uh, in appeal court. So it's the first time in history it's, it's going to be finally done. 
-hmm. It's very important because naturopath, you know, they don't have the funds. Nobody has, you know, the power, the energy, the courage, and the funds to go beyond uh, the superior court. Mm -hmm. So they plead guilty and nobody defends our cause. So right now, because we don't have an order, the only jurisdiction that we're under is the law, the medical law, the Article 31. So if the medical, the law 31 will be justified and dis distinguished by the judge of the appeal court, then we'll finally be safe mm -hmm. to practice. That's what we're doing right now. What drive you to go further? Same if you, you arrive, you lose, you arrive, and you lose again. What drive you? Justice. We need to plead justice. That doesn't make any sense. Never a naturopath. If you look at past judgment, there's no naturopath. There's only one, I believe. Uh, uh, so there's no way naturopath harm people. So it's only good sense. And finally, a judge of appeal is accept, accepting our cause. And if we look here, Article 291 of the Code of uh, Penal Procedure says that it provides the leave to appeal is granted on the question of law only. The applicant, which is any, must demonstrate that they have sufficient interest and that the question raised has, is likely to have a significant impact on the administration of justice or that is highlights a manifest error of law. And we are the first one to successfully raise the flag and say, hey, we have something very profound here. Uh, uh, most probably the justice uh, uh, should uh, uh, put their mind onto this because right now in Quebec, it doesn't make any sense. And most of the time, they will refuse to go any further. But uh, uh, it was accepted this time, which is amazing. You and your other colleague that practice in naturopathy, um, how do you feel about like you can be trapped anytime? Uh, we've been working in fear, you know, and they a lot of people work in fear. And I'm not just talking about naturopathy. Osteopath? I mean, osteopaths are in the same league as I am, you know. They practice with fear. So we need to uh, double check who comes in. Is it a referral? You know, it's not the way to work. I, I, I don't want to work in fear anymore. Um, yes, it, it's on my shoulder somehow. Um, but I don't, you know, I do it for myself. I do it for my client for free of choice free of choice of how I want to heal myself, how I want to be, how I want to be taken care of. If I have a choice to see a doctor or an osteopath or a naturopath for my health. Give me the right to do that. But if, if they continue to do what, what they're doing right now, naturopath, a lot of naturopaths stop working, who will take care of them? Doctors only? That's not the society I want to live in. So that's why I continue my journey um it's 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 to gain justice freedom of choice and and i am doing where i am doing i guess there's a higher power that really drives me because by myself would be very difficult and um hopefully we i hope i have some help with association with schools, uh, uh, of course, my clients have been great help. But yes, we need we need help. We need help for the the support, the supporting help, financial support help to to for us to go as far as we do. Don't forget, you can support our journalism at rebelfieldreports.com. I invite you to go. Chip in what you can and thanks in advance for every donation.